Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you're having a great day, great night, wherever you are watching in from. And today I want to walk you through Ether Delta. Uh, it's a decentralized exchange. You may have used it before. You may have tried to use it before. You may have been just completely frustrated trying to use it before uh, and have had a ton of difficulty. So I want to walk you through why Ether Delta is good, why Ether Delta sucks, why you should use it, maybe when you should use it, and pretty much how to use it. A walkthrough of that, a tutorial, so that if you'd like to use it in the future, if you ever need to use it, you have that in your arsenal and you can be successful in the future utilizing it uh, and get a good understanding for it. So what is Ether Delta? What's the deal with it? Um, we're looking at it right now. It is a decentralized exchange utilizing Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens. The big benefit to ether delta is that it basically has every erc20 token that you could ever want to buy that you could ever want to sell uh, available for you and they are pretty quick to basically add erc20 tokens and when i say erc20 tokens what are those if you're not familiar well i would number one i'd recommend doing your research because if you're in crypto if you're putting your money into it you should have a fundamental understanding of what an erc20 token is but very high level it's a token standard uh for uh, tokens built on the ethereum platform on the ethereum blockchain and the majority not all but the majority of icos that take place nowadays utilize the erc20 token because there's the most infrastructure built up supporting them now with ethereum so the majority of ICOs that come out have tokens that are ERC-20 tokens. Uh, so you can click here and you can see the vast number. Um, I mean, you can pretty much scroll through all day, all night, um, finding new tokens to perhaps buy, to perhaps sell on Ether Delta. Now, in addition to Ether Delta um, being one of the, I would say, quickest places and sometimes only place to get an ERC-20 token that may have ICO'd recently or just might not be hitting exchanges. Um, ERC, or excuse me, Ether Delta actually has fairly decent volume for a decentralized exchange. About $21, $22 million of volume in the past 24 hours went down on Ether Delta. Um, so not a ton, but a decent amount of, it's in some cases a fairly uh, fairly liquid exchange in comparison to some of the other ones. So that is something that you definitely want to, you know, you definitely want to, to think about now, there are definitely some drawbacks to ether Delta, uh, and maybe you've experienced them so far. Maybe you haven't, but it is a truly decentralized exchange. And a lot of people tout decentralization. They say decentralization is the best. It's great. It's, you know, I, I love decentralized, hashtag decentralized everything, uh, until they use something that is actually truly decentralized. And Ether Delta is actually truly decentralized, uh, meaning that you own your wallet, you send your money to a smart contract that is not necessarily controlled by Ether Delta, uh, and then your orders are executed on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, and there's no centralized party holding on to your you know holding on to your tokens holding on to your ethereum uh it's all done via smart contract and because of that and because ether delta is so heavily reliant on the ethereum blockchain it can be slow it can be expensive um and there is no room for error in a lot of respects and i'll get to that in a little bit but with Ether Delta, there isn't necessarily a customer support email or ticket system or something like that, where if you screw up a trade um, and you put that on the blockchain, you're not getting a refund. You're not getting your money back. Um, there is no, you know, there is no kind of a refund policy per se with Ether Delta. There is no customer support email after you personally screw something up because everything is done on your own. So certainly something to consider there. Let's talk a little bit about how you actually utilize Ether Delta. And there are two main, there's really two main concepts that you want to be familiar with, um, with Ether Delta. There is a wallet and there is a smart contract wallet or just the smart contract in general, but there is a wallet and there is a smart contract. And you can see when I'm over here on the left-hand side, there is, uh, you could see with this little sign that says wallet underneath it i have i'm in my omg so if i on ether delta you can go up to the top here and i can click on this and this will take me to any tokens and this will change on a per token basis so if i right now i am on uh, omg but if i go to uh we'll we'll pick something random 
Let's see. We'll pick invest feed IFT. If I go to invest feed, I actually don't have any uh, invest feed tokens at all, but my Ethereum tokens will stay the same because that is my Ethereum wallet. Now, if I go back to OMG, you're going to see the actual information within my wallet and the smart contract stay the same, but you will also see that I have 100 OMG because I already have that 100 Omise Go in my wallet already. So you'll see here now that that doesn't say zero, that actually says 100, and that is 100 OMG that is literally sitting in my Ethereum wallet. I'm actually utilizing the ledger. Um, so there are, you can use, you can use Ether Delta will create a wallet for you. You can use uh, Ledger, and there's a couple other sources that you can utilize, but I like to use uh, Ledger. And there's the two main concepts of having tokens or Ethereum in a wallet and then in a smart contract. When you have your tokens or your Ethereum in a wallet, it doesn't mean all that much. It basically means that it's not really within, it's not really within um, Ether Delta. Once you deposit them into, once you deposit them into Ether Delta's smart contract, then you're actually able to trade off of them. And that's the big, that's kind of the key difference there is you're actually able to trade uh, off of the, you're actually able to trade once they're in the smart contract or this right hand column right here. So you'll see Ether Delta. I have zero OMG in the smart contract, uh, but I have 0 0.042 Ethereum in the smart contract in this right hand column right here. So the exact flow that you want to be familiar with is you'll start off and you might have an Ethereum. You might have an Ethereum wallet, whether it's in your ledger. So if you plug your ledger in, you follow the directions, you plug your ledger in your Ethereum right now. I only have in this Ethereum or in this ledger, I only have 0 0.06 uh, Ethereum in my wallet. Once I want to, if I want to deposit my Ethereum into that smart contract, essentially what I would do is I would click 0 0.05. I would click deposit. And then this is going to allow me to, I would click deposit here. This would allow me to press this button and that will move that 0 0.05 Ethereum over to the smart contract. Now, with that being said, once I move that Ethereum, or once I go to deposit that Ethereum from my own wallet to, Ether to Ether Delta's smart contract, I then kind of lose control of having that within my wallet. It's no longer in my wallet. It is literally in a smart contract. You're basically, if you're brand new to this, if you don't really know what a smart contract is, basically consider it putting it into the Ether Delta bank or the Ether Delta exchange. Once it is in that Ether Delta smart contract, once it's in the right hand column, then you could actually do things off of it. Then you can actually move it around. You can trade it within the order book. You can do whatever you'd like to it. So that is the same thing for, that is also the same thing for tokens as well. So tokens and Ethereum both work in the same manner with Ether Delta. If you want to deposit your tokens, if you want to sell your tokens through Ether Delta, you can obviously do that. You would deposit those tokens. If I wanted to deposit OMG, I would click, I would select 100. I would click deposit. It would pop up on my ledger. I would click okay. And that would move those 100. Uh, that would move those 100 OMG tokens into my Ether Delta smart contract wallet. Now, the one thing that you want to know and that you want to understand is that this is all done, like I said, on the actual Ethereum blockchain. So depending upon how how potentially clogged up the Ethereum blockchain is, this could take a while. Um, and there is an opportunity for you to adjust the gas settings of everything you utilize on Ether Delta. And if you go over here, I'll click here. And then I will scroll down to gas settings. What this will do is this will allow me to update the price of the gas that I'm willing to pay. So you right, you see right now there is a uh, gas price of four guay. A good thing to do is you can go to this website, ethgasstation.info. And this will tell you how much guay you need to pay to have your transactions complete in a timely manner or in a manner that works for you. So right now, if I were to put in my guay at four, if I would put in my gas price at four, my transaction is going to take quite some time. Now, if I were to, if I were to put in the gas price of let's say 50, my transaction is only going to take about three minutes, but I'm going to end up paying a dollar 
per transaction. So this is what I talk about when I say Ether Delta is decentralized. It is a quick place to get tokens, but it's also not cheap because for every bit of money that you have to move around, you have to pay to move that money. It is literally occurring on the Ethereum blockchain. And to do anything on the, to utilize any Ethereum application, typically the user is paying a gas fee. And in this case, you are paying a gas fee. Now, depending upon how quick you can be or depending upon how open you are to having a transaction take a little bit longer, if you you know are in no rush to move the money from your wallet into the smart contract, whether it's Ethereum or the token, you can potentially leave this low. However, if I want to do this, if I want to get it in right away and I want to pay you know, $2, that will put my that will put my transaction in much quicker. My transaction will be mined a lot faster and I will be better to go, you know, I will be better served there. So you could obviously set that price if you wanted to set the gas price at something like 70, you could do that, but you also be paying a fee now of, of $2 simply to move your uh, OMG or your Ethereum or whatever token it is from the wallet to the Ether Delta smart contract. Now, once it is in the Ether Delta smart contract, this is where it can you know, get tricky for some people. And this is where it is very different than a lot of other exchanges out there. With Ether Delta, there is no automatic buy and sell matching. Meaning that if you are to go on, if you're to go on Bittrex, if you go on Binance, and let's say on Binance, you know, you just want to do a market buy of, you just want to do a market buy and you wanted to buy 100 OMG tokens. You would go and you would say, I want to buy... A, 100 OMG tokens at whatever the market is selling them at, and it would automatically put that process through for you. And on the other end of the spectrum with Ether Delta, everything is manual. So essentially with Ether Delta, there are two different things you can do from an order perspective. You can either manually enter in your own order, and then it would pop up up here on the order book, or you could go to the order book and you could select an order that you like and you would want to fill. So if you went here and you wanted to say, you know, I want to, let's say for example, I have 0 0.042 Ethereum right now and I just want to buy a little bit of OMG. I would click on the red here and you would click buy and you would type in the amount of OMG that you'd be looking to buy. So I would have to manually edit this though because this is in order to buy 51 OMG. I only have 0 0.042 Ethereum. So you actually need 0.94 Ethereum to buy that. So I might be able to buy, let's say four ETH, actually probably about two ETH. So I would actually be able to buy two ETH. I would click buy and that would set that process forward and that would move that along. That would pop up on my ledger and I'd be able to go through with that transaction. Alternatively, if you don't see any orders on the order book that you necessarily like that you would want to either buy or sell at, you could enter in your own order. So if I wanted to, let's say for imaginary's perspective, I put my OMG, I clicked the deposit button here, my transaction on the Ethereum blockchain, on the Ethereum network went through, and now the 100 Ethereum or the 100 OMG tokens that were in my wallet, they're now in that smart contract. So now I can trade them. They're not there yet, so I can't trade them. But let's say, for example, sake, those 100 OMG tokens were in my smart contract right here where I'm hovering my mouse. Instead of going on buy, I would click sell here and I would say, I want to sell 100 OMG tokens and I would set the price. So we can see here that maybe the price right now, uh, I want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. So let's say the price I would set that at is 0 0.019 because uh, I'm jumping over the, the first person with the sell order in front of me. So I could set my order there. Now, the one thing that I will say, and this is a big, big warning out there, is that going back to the point where there is no customer service and there is no automatic matching, if I were to say that my OMG token, if I perhaps miss a zero by accident and I want to sell my OMG at, uh, or if I add a zero, if I want to sell my OMG, if I have 100 OMG and by accident I add in another zero, then I could potentially screw over myself. You can see that Ether Delta provides a warning, but this has happened before where people have accidentally entered in a sell order with an excess of zero or something like that. And you can see here, instead of getting 1.9 Ethereum, I would actually only be getting, I could click this sell button and somebody could fill that sell order at 0.19 Ethereum. And I would actually lose 
quite a bit of money because I made a dumb mistake. Uh, and you, know, you can also do that on a buy standpoint as well. But that is one thing that you absolutely, if you're going to enter in your orders manually on Ether Delta, then you need to understand that once that goes, once that transaction goes through, and if somebody clicks on that, they click buy, and that gets mined, that transaction gets mined, then you're out of luck. And you're what you should have gotten 1.9 Ethereum for, you've actually only gotten less than 0.2 Ethereum, and you just sold your OMG for <laughs> a fraction of what they should have been sold for. So that is something that you definitely want to concern yourself with. Now, I've primarily been showing how this how this works on a deposit standpoint. So the big things, again, going back to it, is you have a wallet and you have a smart contract, which you can see here is simply labeled Ether Delta. That is the balance that you have deposited from your personal wallet to the Ether Delta smart contract. Those are the two biggest concepts that you just need to grasp with Ether Delta. You have your wallet and then you have the money in your smart contract. You trade the money in your smart contract. Once you're done trading that, you withdraw that money. You withdraw that either Ethereum or you withdraw that OMG out of the smart contract back into your wallet. Because when it's in the smart contract, it's not necessarily of use to you unless you want to continue trading it. So you deposit your money in from your wallet to the Ether Delta smart contract. You trade with it. Once you buy or sell the tokens that you'd like to sell, you take that money from the Ether Delta smart contract. You withdraw that. You see this withdraw tab here. You withdraw that out. You would click the amount that you want to withdraw and then you're good to go. Lastly, you can actually transfer. So if you wanted to send Ethereum from your address here, or if you wanted to send tokens from your address to somewhere else, you can also transfer those externally. The one thing that you need to know there though, is that that should be typically in your wallet so that you don't want to transfer anything or it's not going to let you transfer anything from the ether delta smart contract it's got to be in your wallet to transfer away so that is something that again you, know, you can do within ether delta and getting back to it kind of cutting the long story short the big things that you need to be aware of is the wallet taking your money from the wallet into the smart contract once it's in the smart contract, you can either click on the orders in the order book, whether you want to buy or sell, you can click on the existing orders and you can sell or buy according to that. And you can make, make adjustments on the numbers that you want to buy or sell uh, within, the, within the order here. Or alternatively, you can make your own order. You can establish a buy or a sell order and that will be added to the Ether Delta order book from there. And then once that is, once your trade is executed, you finish it, it comes out of the smart contract or it's still in the smart contract. You switch your Ethereum tokens for OMG tokens or any other tokens that you want. Then you switch them back out of, you transfer them, you withdraw them out of the Ether Delta smart contract to your wallet. And then you can either transfer them to another wallet or you can keep them in your wallet as you so choose. And again, one of the big things here too is you can set your own gas price, meaning that the more gas that you are spending or the more gas that you, the higher the gas fee, the quicker the transactions are going to, the quicker all this movement is going to happen on Ether Delta. And again, you can go to ethgasstation.info to get an understanding of what the average transaction, uh, you know, what the average transaction fee is. You can kind of use this gas slider to see kind of how long certain things are taking. You can see right now, at least that the standard cost for a transfer on the Ethereum network is $1 and 37 cents with a standard gas price of about 50. Uh, if you want to take things a little bit slower, you can use a gas price of, of 25 Guay and that'll cost you less than 70 cents, but it'll take a bit longer. So all things that you want to be understanding of if you guys have questions i know this can be somewhat confusing in the long run it is something that even if you're not going to actively trade on it i think you should understand how to use a decentralized exchange it teaches you a bit about smart contracts it teaches you a bit about how the ethereum network works and about how a lot of these other uh, networks work as well so i would highly recommend you give it a shot and see how that ends up working for you again if you do have questions please let me know but like I said before, this is a decentralized exchange, meaning that if you do screw up, you're going to pay for it. So you want to start small, get the hang of it before you go big per se with Ether Delta and start 
utilizing a lot of or any medium-sized money on the platform. Hope this was a helpful video for you. I really do appreciate the time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Have a good one. Peace.